Hi everyone, my name is Brent Maley. I'm the senior aquarist here at the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. And today we're going to learn about, about our corals. Corals are an animal and they're really interesting. Uh, they come in lots of different colors, shapes, sizes, textures. But the one thing that they all share is they all have a symbiotic relationship with algae. And as these corals are growing, they actually make little pockets that those algae uh, will live in. And the algae will get all of the uh, energy that it needs from the sunlight, just like plants. And they actually share that with the animal. The animal then, in turn, the coral, will give it fertilizer. So it's the symbiotic relationship. And the algae is actually what gives many of the corals their colors. There are thousands of species of coral in the world. And here at the aquarium, we're lucky to have a lot of the different species that we do. These corals do take a lot of work. And they're a little bit different than, say, a fish. Our fish here at the aquarium, we do have to worry about things like salinity and temperature. Our corals, we have to take an extra step. We have to worry about a lot more different chemicals that are in the water. Uh, we are looking at things like not only the temperature and the salinity, but also things like calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, phosphate, and uh, a lot more other chemical parameters. And we have to make sure that those are all in balance. We have to make sure one's not too high, one's not too low. And so we do put a lot of work into our coral collection here at the aquarium. Coral reefs are uh, really awesome structures. Out in uh, the ocean, they act as different things like wave blocks. They also act as fish nurseries and they're home to the largest biodiversity in all the ocean. So we're actually really worried right now about uh, our coral reefs because they are going through different things like bleaching events related to ocean temperature or different pollutants in the water. So it's really important that we have corals here because first of all, we can learn more about them and why they do the things they do and how to better protect them. And we can also do things like have assurance populations. So if one species of coral dies out in the wild, aquariums across the world would then be able to uh, make sure that species survives and then potentially reintroduce it into the wild. Here at the aquarium, we have about 25 different species of corals and they all come in different uh, classes then we have different hard corals soft corals and a couple of corals in between orange coral here are some of our plating monoporas um, they come in a variety of different colors so we actually have orange monopora here and we have blue or purple monopora here they're closely related but they actually are slightly different enough where they uh, are separate species in addition to kind of our flat plating corals, we have some soft coral here. These are actually toadstool corals. And then we also have some green mushroom corals. Now these corals are called soft corals because they don't have a calcium structure like other corals do. So they're not quite as hard, they're not as rigid, um, and they're more of a softer tissue. We have our open brain coral here, which is actually a really interesting one. They've got lots of color. And those big lobes that you see are actually full of water uh, at night, or if the coral is uh, threatened or scared, they'll actually dump all that water out of the tissue and it kind of deflates just like a balloon. So they are smaller than they appear, but they puff themselves up and that gives them more space to be able to absorb sunlight for the algae. And then we have a green candy cane coral there. And they are kind of an in-between between a hard coral and a soft coral. You can see the green tissue where it's just like our brain coral. It inflates with water to kind of give it more surface area. But they do grow on this almost branching network of calcified structure. Another species of coral we have are these little button polyps or zoanthids. And an interesting fact with these guys is they actually have one of the most deadly toxins inside their body called calitoxin. However, they only use it for defense. They do not use it to capture or kill prey. It is 100% for defense and it's only for if fish were to try and eat them. Big branching coral here is one of our acropora species. 
Um, these guys are really well known because they are a hard coral. They have a very thick, dense calcium structure. And they're the ones that really build coral reefs. So when you think of a large, thriving coral reef, you'll typically see a lot of these acrophoras or uh, other hard corals. And they're the ones that give it a lot of structure and a lot of stability. Working with the coral is a lot of fun. Uh, they're a little bit different than what you would traditionally expect from an aquarium. Uh, they don't move around. They aren't as showy sometimes as fish or sharks. However, these guys are really the basis and the building block for most of the life in the ocean. Uh, again, a lot of fish start their lives in coral reefs where they're nurseries. And then they, as they grow older, they will depend on the coral reefs for food and for structure. 